Hello everyone, my name is Nox, and today's video is going to be about, I guess, how to get into digital art. I'm going to be going over pros and cons, some software, and a little bit of hardware that you're going to need to use um, to follow along in the tutorial. Just very uh, basic level um, things for digital art. So for today, we're going to be using a program called Krita. One second, I'm going to pull it up on here. Okay, so here's Krita, and Krita is a free program. It has both animation and illustrative uh, abilities. You can also make manga or comics with it. It's very competent for starting out. Um, though some of your paid options, um, you can include, if you want to buy a program right off the bat, you can get Corel Painter, Medibang, uh, Paint to Sai, and my personal favorite, Clip Studio Paint. Uh, but Creative is going to be good for now, and this is how we're going to do it. I wanted to show you guys some. Um, I wanted to show you guys some examples of my art, so you, you kind of know where I'm coming from here. You can also check it out on my website. So, this is also to emphasize to you that digital art has a wide range and you can also mix it with uh, traditional art which I've done with this image on the right here this is actually watercolor and color pencil and on the one on the left is purely um, this is purely digital art this is painted except for the background which is photo bashed but photo bashing is something for another time so before we get into Krita I wanted to discuss some pros and cons of digital art I do personally believe that there's overall pros to digital art and a lot of the cons that I've heard over the years such as like it's too easy and there's another argument saying that there is no texture in uh, digital art but as I can show here texture is not too hard to create and come across. Um, and here, if you, you can even mix traditional art if you want to retain some other form of textures. But also you can get brushes that are purely made to add that texture. But the pros for using a... Um, for So, my bad. So the pros for digital art are going to be your ability to use filters and overlays. So both of these actually have filters and overlays on them. I can actually pull up a version uh without the overlay um on the left one at least um let me do that real quick there you go so this one is unedited in terms of a uh, filter and overlay but it doesn't like make the piece and more so um enhances the piece but beyond that, you have basically limitless exploration because when you're doing digital art, if you know where to look, if you know how to get your brushes going, you can kind of, I can say you can kind of play with every media that exists if you go digital art. Um, because this is all, this is paint, but you can also use pencil tools. I have this kind of like scratchy thing back here. This is a, this is a pen tool. I use the pencil tool to sketch this out. I use um, paint brushes to color the inside and make the form. Um, and I also use airbrushes for the shadows a lot of the time. So there is basically limitless exploration. And to some people that's a con, um, having too much, too many options can be daunting to a lot of artists. But if you learn to limit yourself um, to like a select few brushes, then that could help too, if you have that problem. Um, this is a very efficient and forgiving uh, media to go with. So, my that's probably one of my favorite things about digital art, and one of my least favorite things about traditional art is, with digital art, your eraser will erase everything, but with traditional art, I can still see probably marks from my sketching period if I press too hard on my pencil, or if I um, use the wrong colors with my color pencil, that's kind of it. Um, it's a little hard to color on top of a color pencil. I'm not really good with it. Probably if you're really good with it, you don't have to worry about the um, 
those errors too much but if you're like me and aren't too good at it then digital art is really good for you um, in terms of forgiveness and after you buy your art supplies and your software and um, your hardware then you don't really need art supplies afterwards maybe a replacement every couple of years um, I got this tablet after having my old tablet for around five to six years so these also last a long time and you could probably make your money back um, off of maybe a $500 tablet you could probably make your money back really quickly depending on your skill level though I do highly recommend that if you're gonna um, get yourself a tablet start off with a maybe like a $40 one on Amazon $40 options are very viable um, I used to have um, a tablet like that it was I think it was sixty dollars though but it was um, it was really good it really kickstarted my uh, digital art career very well so for the cons I already kind of mentioned two cons which are kind of subjective the one of the biggest cons to this is that there's no original copy this is something that my my, my dad actually talks to me about a lot because he'll go like um, he'll try to get me to paint on a canvas um, and it'll try to make me like do physical traditional media even though this is my main thing uh, Just because he wants like a, a copy of it to hang on the wall and You kind of don't get that and it's and I'll be honest It really isn't the same printing out um, a copy from your computer like a PDF But honestly, that's one of the main and only uh, cons I can think of for digital art. So Take of that what you will I think we can uh, finally get into the program. So let me close these out and let's get into it. All right, so first off, um, you're gonna get all this. When I first started, I had no clue what I was doing. I, I literally went straight for the pens and I was like, oh, wait, is this it? And yeah, oh, oh cool. I didn't know you could do that. Anyway, so this is Krita. Krita is a fantastic little program. So I'm gonna create a new file. Um, we're gonna, you can use control N for that. For this document, so one of the big things that I actually had trouble with starting out in digital media was, what should my width and height be? I highly recommend 11 by 14. This is kind of um, like document size. I always go resolution 300. But I believe if you just do line art, you don't really need to do that. I think you can bring it down to 72. I go for 300 because I like to paint um, on digital. But 11 by 14 is really good dimensions. It's usually my go-to because it's like paper. And then I let that happen. And so now you have your paper. So I'm going to introduce you guys to your tools. So we're going to go over our selection tools. So you have multiple selection tools like this. This is your lasso tool. If you use anything like Photoshop, I think Illustrator also uses um, a lasso tool. Just So any program that has to do with images is going to have a lasso tool. And you're also going to want a wand. So the wand tool basically takes an area and selects everything and all the negative space on the inside. So I'm going to introduce you to the other tool. So let's look at the brush. This is going to be one of your main drawing tools. If you have a tablet um, and you're not drawing with a mouse, which is totally possible, you're going to have you're going to have be able to taper it at the end and have pen pressure. But anyway, this is going to be your brush or pen tool. You can change what this tool is down here. So you can make it a pencil. You can make it an airbrush tool. You kind of have to go through preference. I personally usually like these pencil tools. So, uh, we're going to go over our eraser tool as well. So where's our eraser tool? Oh, the eraser tool is inside the pencil on Krita. It's not like that on a lot of programs, especially Clip Studio Paint. But I guess if you're using Krita, um, your eraser tool is just part of your pen tool. You can turn up the size up and down using your bracket keys. They kind of look like, hold on. They kind of look like this. So using your bracket keys this to turn up your size you can hold it down now look at like this and then this way to turn it down you can't turn it down while moving okay that's, that's nice to know 
Okay, so those are gonna be your main drawing tools, though a little bonus tool you can use is you go up here to tool options. You can see this called brush smoothing. And this is the stabilizer. So what the stabilizer does, it's actually different on most um, it's different on most programs. And I guess it does what it says it does. It stabilizes your lines. It makes it so that it goes a little slower, which makes everything a lot smoother. As you can see, comparing that to my earlier like crazy sketches, here, I'll do some of that now. So if I try to do that now, it's a lot less pretty. Um, I can recommend using the stabilizer for line art. Oops. Um, you would probably want a different type of pen for this too, but I can recommend using it for line art. Okay, so that is all of our tools. I'm going to make a quick drawing to showcase them all in action. So let me get my pencil tool down. Oh, something else to introduce you guys to are going to be layers. Uh, what's unique about layers, um, which is one of the biggest things, biggest differences between traditional art and digital art is so imagine you're getting like a, a glass pane and then you draw on that glass pane so you make this drawing here if i add another layer it's like i put another glass pane on top and i can color on top of it oops let me use a different color um i color on top of it maybe this with this red and these two are separate layers now. So they're two glass panes stacked on each other. And if I pull my eraser out, if I erase the stuff on this glass pane, it doesn't affect the one on the bottom. And if I erase from this glass pane, it doesn't affect the ones on the top. So that's a good way to look at layers. Um, and now let's start on our drawing. I'm thinking of making a rabbit that is making mochi. Uh, I do love mochi. And so I'm going to use my lasso tool real quick. Get this selected. Oops, that's not my lasso tool. So I get this selected and then control T. I can turn it over a little bit so it looks like it's kind of like uh, moving with the the object and then I can to unselect I just get my lasso tool again and then tap with the lasso tool and so I can continue drawing from there So as you can see there, um, I actually did a lot of editing just now. Um, by I was thinking about making where the tail is. I actually thought about making that the foot instead. But I kind of opted against it. And even after changing all that, I could just undo it with Control Z. So this is your best way to undo your latest um, action. A lot of programs also have little history windows if you can look into that, but Control Z is usually the way to go. So I'm going to clean up this sketch a little bit more and then I'll be back and then I'm going to show you guys the saving process. Um, and now the final step is to show you how to save. So go to file then save and then uh, choose where you want it to go. I'll just choose here. So and then I type out whatever I want to name it. Oops. And then it'll save as a create a document. Um, if you have Clip Studio Paint, it'll save as a Clip Studio Paint document. Same with Photoshop. And I'm assuming it's the same with every art program. They'll have their own little document type. 
So save, and then you should be able to access it from there next time you need it. Um, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Okay, so I found my. Oh, I mean, yeah, I'm just gonna. Okay, so I found my uh, create a document here. So this is it. You can actually see my image on top of it. So if I closed out of here, X, and then I clicked on this, it'll open up Krita into my main thing. So it's opening right now. And here it is. And if you want to export it, you can file, export, and then you can export it as a PNG. Choose PNG, boom. And then you should have it as an image. Let me see if I can get that as well. And here it is. This is the image and you can send it however you want and do whatever you want with your image. So thank you for watching this video and thank you to Nerd Vonicon for making this video possible, reaching out and letting me know they uh, wanted me to do this. This was really fun. I haven't actually done something like this in a long time. So if this is something you'd want to see more of just let me know i'll put the qr code again if you want to check out my website and then on my website it has my social media but thank you for watching and thank you to nerd icon for this opportunity goodbye